This is Eugene Panrutkovich. I'm the laptop screen doc. And the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Uh, today we're going to replace a cracked laptop screen on an Asus 1005 HA netbook computer with a 10.1 inch screen. Uh, Asus makes several models of netbook computers and most of them look like this have this form factor and most of them follow a procedure very similar to what I'll show you today. Okay, uh, so the thing that we have to do, there's some um, hinge covers down here, one, and on the other side, two. We have to remove those first, and then we remove the screws that hold the plastic frame on the screen in. Uh, some of the models don't have those screws, they just the frame just snaps in without the screws so it depends on the model and then uh, we take out the screen so uh, the tools that you need this is probably the most important tool for this job is some pair of metal tweezers an electronics screwdriver with a ph0 bit and a ph1 bit an X-Acto knife blade and possibly a prying tool. I'm not sure if we'll use this one. Okay, so first thing we want to do is close the laptop and then remove the battery so the laptop doesn't start, turn on accidentally while we're working on it. Uh, probably the trickiest part for this laptop is removing the hinge covers. The way that I found that works best for the hinge covers is if you go in from the back and use the metal tweezers to dig in right under this corner here like this and just to pop it open. So one and let's do the same thing On this maybe try this corner for this side if it doesn't come easily just take your time okay so this one doesn't want to come like this the next method is to take the exacto knife knife dig in and just pop it open like this all right so next we open up the laptop and we want to remove the hinge cover so you just dig them out there's one and just take your time on this one or the other method of work just see which one go which way goes in the easiest okay and this one came out. All right, next we use our X-Acto blade to take the little rubber feet off. What I like to do with those is stick them next to the screw so we don't lose them. That method works most of the time. Now this laptop has a glossy screen and some have glossy screens, some have matte screens and I think most vendors won't sell you the glossy or matte, they'll sell what you whatever they have in stock. So you might end up with a matte screen if you had one a glossy one before or vice versa. Okay, so we removed the rubber feet. Next we're gonna remove the screws. Put them to the side. Keep your screws in one place and keep a separate pile of screws for each each step so I don't confuse them when putting them back together. Two. I personally think having this many screws on the frame is overkill. 
and probably that's the reason why they'll have any screws on the later models with similar design. Okay, so we're almost done removing the screws. Make sure the camera stays focused. And looks like there's a magnet here because the screw's just staying put. All right, so next, once the screws have been removed, we try to take off the cover. So what I like to do, and what usually works best is if you use your fingers to dig in on the frame on the screen side and just kind of take it off. And it pops right off. Wow. This is actually going better than I expected. Sometimes you have to struggle with this. Okay, so let's take a look. Yeah, it looks like there are some screws here and here that we have to get to to take off the screen from the frame. So in order to do that, we have to remove these screws here to tilt the screen forward. So let's go ahead and do that. One, and here's my pile of screws, so I keep them in separate piles. And two. Okay, now we can tilt the screen forward a little bit to get to the screws on the side. So, and be careful not to strip them. Okay, depending on the model, you might have to remove different sets of screws to get to the side, but it's fairly easy to figure out. If in doubt, just start removing screws until the screen can tilt forward. Okay. Two. And now let's remove the screws from the other side. This side has the video cable, so be careful as not to damage it. And the final screw. Alrighty. So now we can tilt the screen forward. Let's see. Okay. I'll try to be careful. Okay, there we go. Here it comes. Okay, now we can tilt the screen forward and see what's going on behind here. Looks like there's some adhesive tape here that holds the connect video cable. We remove this adhesive tape. Okay, and we're almost there. We remove this tape here. and gently pull the connector out. Okay, and now we have this screen out. Now, if you notice, um, this screen, it's, a little, it's different than most other netbook screens. So for pretty much all other netbook screens, they're the same size, but the connector is down here and the connector is a different form factor. So the screens are not compatible. So when you do order a screen, make sure it's specifically for the Asus EEPC netbook, because once again, they're different. Now the part number for this screen is HSD100IFW1. 
So when you order it, make sure that there's a photo of the screen and the back of the screen looks exactly like this. And now uh, once you get it in, you reverse the procedure and put it in. Uh, as of early 2011, this type of screen costs about $65 on eBay, which is about $15 more expensive than a screen for most other netbooks. But um, that's the price you have to pay for owning an Asus. Actually, I own a Asus netbook almost identical to this one, and I'm pretty happy with it, so I think it's worth the price. Once again, I uh, just reversed procedure for putting everything back together, and take your time, and good luck.